My name is Glenn Williams, and I'm your host. And to my right and to your left, of course, back. I'm back. From wherever she was <laughs> on, on location someplace, yep. of course, is uh, Julia Purchaseppi. Hello, kiddo. How are you? Very well rested. <laughs> well rested. That's good. Yes. That's good, and yeah. welcome back. And we want to tell everybody we are coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV. And you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. And give us a call at 617-708-3290. Dave and the great staff at BNN are in the other room answering the phone. So if you'd like to let us know what's going on art artfully in your community, in your life, or what's new and exciting, please feel free to give us a call. Yeah. So how are you doing? Good. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We I'm had sorry, a great I birthday. That That's birthday all right. Show. That's all right. We, in our family, we celebrate the whole week. Gotcha. Okay. You know, so we just got back from um, uh, uh, Saratoga Springs up in New York. Yeah, I've been we, there. We drove up in the nice. rain and drove back in the rain. <laughs> Oh, man. It was an indoor visit. Yeah. So it was nice. We brought me mom back to visit for a while. She's nice. living up there with my sister. So it was nice to have people, you know, to, to visit and what have you. So, yeah. so she's going to hang around for a while. She'll be in probably at some point nice. to the show. Great. Uh, uh, what did you do on your vacation? You know, you can't be in the public eye without <laughs> sharing all of the sort of details. Did you go anyplace fun? I went to New York. Okay. Um, on a little... Uh, Away staycation, I like to call it. Okay. Because um, I have family in New York, so oh, okay. um, I was staying with them, and it was a staycation of sorts. But we did so much um, Good. and a lot of artful things. Good, we I'm went glad. To concerts. I went to the Whitney Biennial. Was it the city you went to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, when you say New York, I was in New York too, but it was right. 300 yeah. and something miles yeah. away. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we did a lot. I saw some great shows. Um, this little bar in Brooklyn called Bar Bay, they mm -hmm. always have the most amazing um, bands do residencies there, and it's kind of a, um, a little bit of a, a recording studio. Oh, and nice. There bands from all over the world. And okay. a, a band called Chicha Libre was playing, um, a Peruvian, psychedelic Peruvian band. Yep. So we got to see them, which was pretty awesome, and then um, the Windy Biennial which was interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't What's get, um, you know, I studied art history. Yep. And I love modern, contemporary art, abstract, conceptual, whatever. I, I love all types of art. But I had a really hard time um, not understanding, but just why. Grasping. Why? Well, you know, <laughs> art is, uh, all art isn't for everybody. Right, yeah. It, it, it seems like a lot of the art was is very personal, mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's not for everybody to get, but when, when you put something in the Whitney Biennial, you'd think that you'd want to pick things that people relate to, mm -hmm. or it speaks to a certain audience, or well, something these pieces like that, that got past the jury? So they were in the show? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh. All the pieces in the show are probably... So it was three different curators on three different floors. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were all very different. Um, and each curator, I guess, you know, they go through a ton of artists and, yeah. you know. Did you get to any of the traditional rooms, the, the Guggenheim or, or any of those? Or did you get to the New York? No. Well, the Whitney has some... The um, they have... A permanent collection, um, which is some of the, the older uh, modern work. Right. Um, but I didn't get to any other museum. Any other museums? No. See, we're plan I want to, Janice and I want to plan a trip to New York just to hit the, hit the two or three museums yeah. and over to Soho and get, get some of that culture back into our lives. Yeah. But we also want to make a trip to uh, Washington, D.C., to the National Museum. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be our big trip that is next a big month, trip. I think. Nice. It should be nice weather that down I hope there so. by them. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. So what's, um, what's coming up soon for you? Now that you're back, you were out of work. You weren't working, too. This was your I was not vacation. Working. Yes, this is my vacation. Not many people take the last week in March <laughs> off. What's that all about? Well, um, is this an April Fool's joke? <laughs> yeah, surprise. I hope that not. is tomorrow, isn't it? It is. Yes, yeah. We're lucky. Yeah. We're so lucky. <laughs> Um, no, my fiancé is in medical school, and he was on spring break. Oh, so, that does it, yeah. um, It was kind of a, just, it was what it was. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do we have any openings to talk about, or is that going to be in Julia's World? Or, are you um, doing a Julia's I'm World? I'm doing show? Julia's World, Good. yep. 
Yep. Um, as far as um, DER openings, documentary educational resources, that's where I work. Yes. Um, openings, um, not anything coming up soon. Um, we uh, had a great screening the other night, um, the postcards from Tora Bora. Yes. Um, and we're hoping to get a podcast. Um, we had a great interview with the filmmaker um, at a Q&A afterwards. So we're hoping to get that up on the website, www.der.org. That's great. You know, next week we have a very, very exciting show here. Yep. The United South End artists have hung. Well, you, were, you should have been here last week. They were out there hammering and sawing and, and drilling into the wall during, oh <laughs> during the show. Yikes. But we told them they because they were preparing the student gallery out there for yeah. a pretty exciting uh, event next Monday night. Yeah, And that's it's during our show, so if you tune in next Monday night, we're actually going to, I think, we're going to try and sneak out of the studio to, to kind of meet some of the people out in, in the, because there's going to be a mob of people out here doing opening gallery things. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And I think we're going to try and drag a couple of them back in here to sit and talk a little bit about their organization. And this first of what we hope will be many uh, shows uh, in the, we have yet to be named Art Gallery here <laughs> at BNN TV. Now there's an idea. Well, we can name it right now. There's an idea. <laughs> We're an art gallery. We're an art gallery. Send us your info. Send us your thoughts on what we should call this art gallery. And you know where you can send it? You can tweet us because we are now on Twitter, mm -hmm. and it's at it's all about arts. If you go on there, you can send us a tweet and let us know if you have a question you want to get to us. We have staff people checking out the social media, making sure that we get all the information that we need when we need it. And also, I want to also remind you that this show will be on YouTube tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The show you're watching right now will be on YouTube tomorrow. About this time, it'll get up. And that address is It's All About Arts 1. So if you go to It's All About Arts 1, all of our shows that we've been doing, in for now we've almost got about we've got about a year and something up there now so we're pretty excited about it plus there's some old archived shows from many many years ago we've been here 16 years now so we've got some shows back in the 90s with what weird haircuts and in different looks that we're we're putting up uh, I do want to take just a couple of seconds to talk a little bit about our good friends that keep us on the air here Boston Main Streets is a great organization what they do is they're a volunteer-driven organization that helps revitalize the business districts around the city of Boston and now the world. The first one was in Rosendale. And what their mission is, is they work with the property owner who has an empty storefront down front to make sure that they have the right demographic information to put the prop business in down there. And after the business is in there, there's another committee that kind of comes along and helps with the design of the sign and making sure that everything is up to code and you got all the permits signed and T's crossed and all that stuff to get the right kind of signage out in front of your building. And then there is the promotions committee which puts on events in the, in the business district, bringing people down to make sure that they know all about it so that they know who's in there, what's available for them in their neighborhood. So we want to thank the Boston Main Streets program for being our friend for all these many years. They've kept us on the air here and it's a great partnership. I was on the board of directors there for 18 years. Uh, Rosendale was the very first Main Street in an urban setting, and so it's, we're very proud of, of the stuff that we've done out there in Rosendale. It wasn't always a destination, but now people come from all over just to have dinner. Yeah. It's great. The other yeah. thing I want to talk about is this amazing building that we're in, BNN TV. We're right here at 3025 Washington Street in Eggleston Square. And what it is, is it's a place where you can come and do television programming. Yes, this building is for you, and this, these stations are for you to put your television programming and your thoughts and your ideas on the air. Um, this station you're watching right now, Channel 9, is um, the news and information station. This is where nonprofits get to come and talk about their nonprofit, get their mission statement out there, bring guests in to talk about the issues that they're, they're working on. The other side, you know, last Thursday, I wish you were in town, we did, Tim Casey came and did, we're celebrating 30 years here at BNN TV. Yeah. And the last Thursday of every month, they're featuring a producer who's been doing work here. Transmission Hour was featured last week, and he did a, a how-to-do Transmission Hour. And Transmission Hour was a show where, where Tim brought in 
a great crew of people, uh, five camera people, three or four sound mm -hmm. people, and for an hour recorded a band live in the studio. Then cool. took everything back to low budget records and mastered it up and stuff, so he had this amazing presentation. But that's what you do on the other side. You come in and you take Final Cut Pro, you learn how to use all of these great cameras, the lighting, all the sound, how to do all the things you need to do to do a television program, and get it on the air. So if you go to www.bnntv.org, that's where you can get all the information on how you, can, you too can be doing television, live like this or produced in your own studio or downstairs <laughs> in our workshop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, we've got a great show tonight. Yeah. We're going to do some history tonight, and we're going to be talking about one of the, one of the greatest innovative sculptors of, of all time. Uh, there's a great new book out uh, that we're going to be talking about. We've got the publicist is here, and we also have a great sculptor in here. Mm -hmm. Someone to tell, kind of walk us through a little bit about about what we're, we're actually learning and, and talking about as far as this great book here. And uh, we'll, um, do you have anything else? No, Julia's World next. Julia's World will, will be up next. Listen, gang, you are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. We will be back in just a couple of minutes. Please don't go away. We're coming to you live from Studio B, and we'll be right back. Thank you.
Well, welcome back, gang. Thank you very much for hanging in there. I want to remind everybody that you are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts, and we're coming to you live from Studio B. And if you'd like to join us, you're more than welcome. Can't, you're more than welcome to. We're at six one seven seven zero eight three two nine zero. Uh, give us a call. Let us know what's going on artfully in your community, in your neighborhood, in your life. Or if you just have a general question, like when am I going to shave that beard off? Uh, so we haven't decided when that's going to happen yet. But um, we're really happy to have back after her whirlwind New York trip. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and it's time for Julia's World. Hey guys, welcome to Julia's World. Uh, I'm gonna start off uh, with a band who's coming to Boston. I first heard of this band from my mother and father. Unfortunately, that's really sad. Um, but the Pentatonix, uh, this band that's kind of getting um, lots of press uh, lately. It's an a cappella band and they won the, the, the show, the sing-off. Um, they won like $200,000 and a deal with Sony um, and they're coming to Boston and um, I think the show is mostly sold out but you could probably still get tickets. It's Saturday, April 5th at 7 at the House of Blues um, and if you don't go to the show, make sure to check them out because they're pretty cool. Um, Next, we have the 8th Annual Boston Muslim Film Festival, um, which has some great films in its programming. Um, and that is, it's put on by um, um, Project Noor, I'm not saying, sure if I'm saying that correctly, but it's a student-led initiative of the American Islamic Congress. Um, and um, it's all over the city in different venues, um, and I just want to, um, mentioned one of their events, which is one of the films that was nominated for um, uh, the Oscars, uh, which I think I had mentioned when Glenn and I were talking about it a while ago, and that is The Square. Um, and that'll be April 8th um, from 7 to 9 at, um, uh, at MIT, um, and it's free and open to the public. Um, so you can go, just Google the 8th Annual Boston Muslim Film Festival, and you can see their whole schedule, um, and it's supposed to be great. Um, last or third, uh, I have the first ever college night at BCA, Boston Center for the Arts, um, which is pretty cool. That'll be Thursday, April 10th at 7.30 p.m. Um, and that'll be in the Mills Gallery, um, which right now has um, an ex exhibit up called Brink V1. Um, and uh, I think it changes but uh, this particular exhibit explores ideas of itinerancy uh, in contemporary photography. Um, and so there'll be live DJs, there'll be um, uh, chances to participate in art making, uh, and then there's also gonna be a student uh, photo contest or photo competition, um, which if you wanna participate in, um, you can email CWO at bcaonline.org um, and there will be refreshments make sure to bring your student ID so that's pretty cool that they're putting that on um, and lastly I just want to mention we got our first artist tweet uh, to promote their work um, which is pretty cool um, and it's a local filmmaker uh, her name is Renee Ricciardi thanks Renee for tweeting um, and her film is called Bees in Italy, um, and she's, um, I believe, currently doing a Kickstarter, but she went to Italy, she's really into bees and, um, and beekeeping, and um, I just love this whole topic. Um, it ties into my kind of looking for artists who are doing things on the environment, because um, bees right now are going through a lot, um, and so it's great that she's doing a film on them to bring awareness to their their situation. Um, and that's all I have for you. So back to you, Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia. That was great. Thanks very much. I want to remind everybody that if you're not sitting in Boston, right, or you're sitting in Boston watching us, and there's somebody that you'd like to have them tune into this show, if they go to www.bnntv.org, it's an easy way for them to um, uh, click on what's playing right now, and they can get to see that they get to see us live and give us a call from wherever they are. We have people out in Portland, Oregon, Midwest, people down in Florida, people all over the place that tune in to find out what's going on artistically in our community. And it's a great, great thing that we, a great tool that we have. We're very, very proud of that. 
Also, it'll get, this show tomorrow will be up on YouTube. So if you go to www.youtube.com and put in It's All About Arts 1, that will get you right to that station, and it'll be a great way. And right now, it's my great pleasure and honor to in introduce you to Robert Astle. Hello, Robert. How are you? Great. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. I really do appreciate it. Do you Thank find you. us okay? Yeah, of course. But I have a great guide and, and driver here in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> it's always helpful yeah, to make it around. Yeah. Are, you, are, you from a, are you from the area at all? I live in New York. You live in New York. Yeah. So you're up from the city. That's right. That's well. Well, thank you for coming in. And you're also, you're also winging about the world. You're a very busy guy. Yeah. <laughs> What's the, what is, the, you are a, uh, well, I, I guess I didn't give you the correct moniker. What's the difference between a publicist and a publisher? Well, the publicist is the one who, who basically creates the marketing plan and delivers the marketing plan for you know, books and, and, and basically liaises with all the media. The publisher is basically the owner, operator of the operation. Makes so the, the publicist makes works all for the, you. Makes all the critical <laughs> decisions. Yeah, yeah. So, so all the, all the, all, everything will fall in that direction. Well, thank, thank you very yeah. much. And um, it's Astrid Blue, right? That's right. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us. We're going to be talking a little bit about, about a, a great book and a great author and a, mm. and a great subject. But, but let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about the, the, the outfit, the organization. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how old is Astrid Blue? We are uh, really a new. It's like really? two years old. Oh, really? That, well, that's pretty yeah. new in the publishing. Yeah, it was a startup. We got in it because we saw this disruption because of the the ebook the influence of the ebook and yeah. ipads and kindles etc like yeah. that so we saw that as it's sort of the great kind of a leveling you know we could develop books that are just the same as anybody else in right. the business so we started up uh, 2 years ago and we published 18 books in mm -hmm. uh, in close to a year and a half so that's we've been busy neck. that's busy yeah you yeah. see this gray hair doesn't come from <laughs> <laughs> You were a brunette when you moved in, when, <laughs> exactly. you, when you opened the office. Well, yeah. I asked a real question. I was half joking when I asked it. I said, is, is the book available at Barnes & Noble? And, and, uh, and of course it is, but you know, sure. there's, there's all of this media that's taking us into the digital age. Right. Um, uh, do, do, you, do you guys get into, into putting, putting things on, uh, available in that medium as well? Yeah, everything, all our books are put out digitally. Yeah. Yeah. So they're available all over the globe 24 hours a day, basically. And what's the website I would go to to buy those 18 books? Well, you can go to our website, which is uh, www.asterandblue.com. Mm -hmm. We don't have that up on the site, because well, because we don't, but we will make sure that we yeah, have it, because right. we're going to be putting your name in company here. We'll make sure that people, when they click on your name, it goes right to that terrific. website. That's okay, terrific. that'll be helpful for you. That's great. Let's talk about the, the book that we're, we're here to talk about. Uh, if we can get a, a look at this here. Let's talk, let's talk not only about the book, tell me a little bit about this amazing author. Well, John is, uh, he had a, a, a remarkable career. He was the professor emeritus at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. uh, started off his career, he was a, a Jesuit priest. Was he really? And then gave that up, uh, married a wonderful uh, woman named Joan, and uh, then began a, a long and, 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 and wonderful teaching career. Mm. At, and basically, in a lot of ways, helped shape the lives of many wonderful, many wonderful American writers like Dave, uh, David Henry Huang and uh, you know, many others in, in that kind of a generation. So he's, he was very influential, very, very influential teacher. Um, was teaching his main gig for the for a majority of the time and yes. writing kind of putting things yeah. out now, but now he's 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 much more experienced. Even wow. than he's you retired. And I. He's, well, he's retired. So <laughs> he's, he's, he's living teaching. the experienced life. Is yeah. he still writing? Yes. Well, he wrote this book. He got a, uh, a, a foundation grant from the Guggenheim Foundation. Mm -hmm. I think about six years ago, mm -hmm. and then he went in to Italy and uh, lived in Florence. Mm -hmm. And I think he had the ideas were forming at that particular time about this novel. But I think once he saw, went to the Bargello Museum where this this little sculpture of David uh, still is, mm -hmm. um, saw that and the other Donatello sculptures within Florence. Mm -hmm because that was really where Donatello really made his mark as, a, as an artist and a craftsman. And then John got inspired by 
that particular sculptor and then wanted to write and and wanted to write a story that really was sort of the backstory of how this sculpture got made in this very particular time during the Renaissance mm -hmm. of Italy. So I think so he there's used a lot, that. There's tons of research involved in it. It's a, it's a work of yeah. art. It's not just yeah. it's not surfing the net and, and filling in your. Oh no no. This guy. No, I think John did an enormous amount of work, and mm -hmm. not only that, he looked at how the work was actually constructed. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the technique of actually making this lost wax um, a bronze sculpture. And we have to remember, and your viewers may, some of them may realize, but the little sculpture of David was the first freestanding sculpture, nude sculpture, in about a thousand years. Really? Yeah. That's why it's so incredibly famous. It was, I mean, Donatello did a lot of research on Greeks, and they were really inspired by that. But nobody was doing that because of the, the, the weight and the influence of the church. Yes. And nobody could do a nude sculpture, particularly a man right, sculpture. Right. And then uh, Donatello, under uh, a commission by Cosimo de, uh, de Medici, a very wealthy man, uh, probably at that time the wealthiest man on the planet, said, I want, a little, I want, this, I, I want this little sculpture in my garden. Mm. So he gave, him, and, he gave him the money, and, and the rest is kind of history at that right. particular point. Now, when somebody, when somebody takes this adventure here, is it, is it, it's a story. It's, 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 not, it's not a textbook. No, 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 you no. Know? I mean, this is, a, this is a journey down some of the, the, some of the years of this amazing sculptor's, sculptor's life. Yeah. yeah. Well, what John did is he took artistic license, of course. It's a narrative. Donatello had... A, well, there couldn't uh, have been many interviews done. Uh, no. <laughs> but what was interesting, what they did have of Donatello was his income tax statement. That's kind of interesting. That still exists. Uh -huh. So I think it's still in the museum there. You can go look at it, which is kind of interesting. So he used a little bit of that information in the novel, which is interesting. That's cool. I mean, yeah. it's a, so, so the research brought him to Venice... No, Florence. Florence, I'm Florence. sorry. Brought him to Florence, and, uh, and he discovered probably some things he didn't know himself, uh, of, oh, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the artist himself. Yeah, and I think also with a lot of side research, particular, because it's very much layered a lot into the novel, is the way that the way that this sculptor, this particular kind of sculptor, is mm. is working, and the materials that he used, and, and how they had to pour the bronze. So... In, incredibly, you know, carefully, otherwise you make bubbles and destroy right, and right. melt the wax and you have to start all over again from oh. zero. So imagine the yeah. kind of pressure and strain and they're dealing with, you know, wood and rope and bronze buckets right. and fire. No, it's <laughs> so it's pretty raw stuff. I don't, th I don't think that, that uh, some of our younger citizens, and we have a lot of, we have a lot of calls, attendance for this, mm. for this show, you know. Um, a lot of people don't, don't appreciate, well, I think they appreciate it, but they've never done the work in the traditional sense of, like you said, you know, the barrel of fire going on, pulleys uh, and, uh, and ropes, and, uh, and everything's, you know, today forklift and digital right. performer and, uh, right. and, and computers to get everything just the way you want them. Yeah. Um, the eye of this artist, this master, has to be one of the most incredible yeah. tools that he had. Yeah, and Donatello, I think himself, was truly, probably, really uh, years ahead of everybody else mm -hmm. in how he was thinking. Uh, for instance, his it, it's it's in Florence as well is of the Mary Madeline, is this picture of this woman, more, mostly like Mary's, like this beautiful, serene, you know, elegant kind of woman. Yeah. His is this woman tortured by the loss of her son and everything like that. And, and the way that she, she does it, she's sort of skeletal, she hasn't eaten. Mm -hmm. It's powerful, profound piece of art. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's right. be we, moving. We, we, th we think of the Blessed Mother, we think of her as this beautiful, ah. you know, uh, um, gifted and, and cherished person. Yeah. But, um, Usually a little chubby. Yeah, happy. Hap exactly. You know, everything's, yeah, right. you know, she's... The serenity. Yes, and right, all that. Right, but when right. in real life, if you think about it, if your son was executed in front of you in the manner in yeah. which her son was, yeah. she would be destitute. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's important that, that there was somebody at the time to say, not at the time, obviously, of the crucifixion, but when art was beginning to change, mm. when the church was maybe opening up a little, mm. 
you know, uh, that they would be able to say, this is probably what she really looked like. Look at the suffering. Look at the fear. It's powerful. Yeah. Powerful, powerful yeah. piece. And so I think he was able to create those images, like this little boy David, which is very impish character. Mm. I mean, naked, and his head is on Goliath, and yeah. he's, he doesn't look like he's taken him out with a rock. You know, <laughs> he's like, and, and, you know, Goliath... It looks apparently the idea is that Goliath was probably maybe Donatello's face, which is very oh, interesting. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh. And then it's a very sexual kind of a sculpture uh -huh. yeah. as well, you know, this very impish young boy, and he's kind of got a little smirk on his face. So it's, the after all just did win. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's not like, you know, he didn't give a high five or a pump or anything like that. It's, it's a lot more subtle. But I think the, the, the way that he, he sculpted it, I, I was lucky. I was about three weeks ago. I was in Florida. I was going to say, you uh, just yeah. traveled there. Yeah. yeah, and I saw it and had to deal with the lineups to go in to see it. But it's an it's amazing right. little sculpture. Was it the book that brought you there? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Of yeah. course, I wanted to go see some of the other work yeah. that, that he had done as well, Donatello yeah. had done as well, and see sort of the landscape and that sort of thing. What did you think? It's just mind-bending. Yeah. It's mind-bending because you t it really does take your breath away. Because typically you think, oh, well, yeah, sure, it's just a sculpture. But then you walk into the room and you just see, you know, 300 eyes all mesmerized by this Fixed. little yeah. it's bronze sculpture. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty incredible. Right. And I think, that, I think that inspired John. He saw that power of the bronze and how beautiful it was and, and then realized in his research how incredibly difficult it was to right. actually do it, make it. Yeah. That was the thing. That's the thing. So well, I, I think that as, as an incredible writer, I think he's, he's going to be, with, we're going to be looking at some great history in this book, I think. I think yeah. it's really, really important. And you know something, we're also very, very fortunate to, to have Patrick Pierce here, too, mm. who's an incredible sculptor in his own right, but he's going to give us a little insight in, into some of how that, how that is done. Give us the website again, please, Robert, where people can go sure. to get the work. You know. sure. www.astor, A-S-T-O-R, and blue mm -hmm. are, you, are you accepting any manuscripts? Sure. <laughs> It's our business. That's where you can send them, right, Robert? Yeah. Thank you so right. much for being here. With Thank us. you. I really do appreciate it. Great Listen, pleasure. gang, you're watching BNN TV. That's fa that was fascinating. You are watching BNN TVs. It's all about arts. My name is Glenn, and we're coming to you live from Studio B. Listen, we're going to be back in just a minute with an, with a great sculptor to talk a little bit more about this. Let's talk about that whole st the, the style and and how the the sculpture of David was made and how some of these works are done. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks. There comes a time when everybody needs to be with someone When I have realized you're that someone How could I have been so blind When you have been there all this time I need you Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for being here with us. Uh, we are talking uh, at length uh, about a you know, phenomenal um, sculptor from from many, many moons ago, and what we needed to do is we needed to bring in a sculptor who is, in his own right, a, a incredibly successful and talented in, in, in a sculptor into our studio to talk to us. Uh, Patrick Pierce, thank you so much for coming back. Well, my it's been pleasure. a while. Several how's, years. How's everything going? It's going great. I got to tell you this. You know what we're doing? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching, and we're doing sculpting now. And we're doing all clay. And I have all the kids making little animals and little people because uh, there's 10 different groups of kids in diff various ages from kindergarten to the eighth grade. And each grade is going to be depicting so a story from the Bible. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell you how many uh, the heads of John the Baptist they wanted to do, and how many, you know, and, and Jonah in the whales. Oh, we've got Noah coming. We've out got, now. we've got. They're going to do Noah's Ark. So everyone's making animals and people so that we can do the Garden of Eden. Anybody doing an angry God? Yeah. I'm working on God. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I see that every night when I go to bed. No, no, no. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, to help, help me and, and the cats in BNN land to better appreciate um, this, this sculptor that we're, we've been talking about. Yeah, Donatello yeah. was uh, an eminent figure, among mm -hmm. eminent figures. Yeah. I mean, he was an iconoclast, but he was like this, this figure of... Um, the young David. Yeah. How this, tall was it? Is it how? Uh, it's uh, life size. It's life size. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but meanwhile, we had Michelangelo with all these novels and muscle going on in all the torso. Here's a very smooth. Yeah, Da Vinci mm -hmm. was doing other things. So uh, Donatello was was really. Uh, struck out with this piece into a new direction. Uh, as Robert mentioned earlier, right. it was the first uh, standing nude bronze uh, cast sculpture in a thousand years. Was the fact that it was standing or the fact that it was nude more important? Um, standing, nude. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just this I know the nude, the nude part is probably the breakthrough in, in the Catholicism and in, in, in the Catholic Church and maybe even in public acceptance, nude of a man. But the, the standing part, the actual standing, well, that was, standing. yeah, a technical achievement. Yes, it, it is. I, yeah, they off, you know, had props to, to hold them up and uh, or big think, feet. Yeah, a, a good weight. Yeah, um, I, I'm finding working in my own work now. I, I the base is yeah. often the first thing, or sometimes I get somewhat into a piece, improvised, and then I realize. Oh my God! It's it's mm -hmm. it's not rooted, mm -hmm. and then I, I I cut some off and start a whole new direction mm -hmm. with a piece. Um, I, I'd like to contrast, you know, the way Donatello worked with the way uh, I myself worked. Okay, that'd be good. He had a he had a guild. He had many apprentices. He had powerful patrons. A guild for our BNN friends. Well, he, he had uh, many assistants uh, doing different parts of. Of the studio work, the mm -hmm. hauling in interns. the stone, interns, also uh, accomplished craftsmen who could okay. rough out stone. So mm. he could sketch in a big block, oh, I wanted to go here, here, and here, and some lesser uh, worker would rough, rough it out, and then he could come and focus. Real fine tune it. What, what LaRue brings out in the Medici boy is Donatello had this uh, riveting focus. And that's a constant. Uh, when I'm working now, I find myself grounded in material. That's why sculpture is not music, it's not poetry, it's the material. Mm -hmm. It's manifest in three-dimensional and presence. Whereas, you know, in this digital age, you're, you're working on an iPad, everything is dancing electrons, it's superficial and it's gone. What, right. did I, what just happened? It, right. it disappears. Right. But when you're working with material, it slows you down and it makes you manifest what you're feeling and what needs to happen now. And I, I would say that's a constant with what I'm doing with rough steel and composing uh, work on the fly and what he was doing trying to 
capture what he was feeling looking at the model with was his work a composition or did he already know inside what was inside when he started out he knew what he was after but he couldn't always get it at the first pass. Right, yeah. So that's why I, I think John uh, LaRue did a, a, a masterful job of depicting the focus of the artist working on the theme. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, that's very interesting. My question, though, is he was called ahead of his time, avant garde uh, what have you. What would make him so avant garde -ish? Well, one, uh, I, I, I sort of would contrast with, with some of what Michelangelo was doing at the same time with these, uh, these, these really, uh, he was so into uh, the musculature and the, uh, the novel of the body. He so it's, almost, more the, it's more the product than the, than the, the, the journey? Well, was that, you know, as the French say, the style is the man. The yeah. uh, so, uh, Michelangelo was, was one, this uh, naughty man, and then looking at David, again, it's this anodyne kind of mm -hmm. very slender, graceful potency. Right. Um, I've, heard, I've heard terms like wax and, and copper and what, can you walk me through kind of like what the steps would be? For uh, lost wax Yes, casting. for lost wax casting with brass and what have you. Well, but that was typically bronze. Bronze, uh, I mean. Yeah. But yeah, again, uh, John uh, LaRue did a, a, a good job of, initially, the, the, the armature was, you know, dung, horse hair, and, and sticks. And then they sort of gave some of the basic shape, then clay rounded that out, and then he started working at fine detail with, with wax right. over that. Right, right. And then after that was achieved at considerable focus, then that was invested with another layer of uh, clay and, or plaster. Then this whole thing, it's more complex than this, but I'm trying just No, no, to, no that's fine. Uh, the wax was melted away and bronze would come in where the uh, wax had been was right so there was there was a, a an inner force and an outer shell and then the space between yeah. was how the bronze that's what i was trying to get at i mean people think that sculpture is they carved out this big piece of granite someplace and you came at it with your with your hammer and chisel and sandpaper and cut this big square piece into this little statue that's not the procedure yeah that well that that's one that's one that's way but that's honored. not what we're talking about. that is not in this case what okay. we're talking so about. I want to make sure people understand that there was a different kind of that, that, that the road was absolutely different than that then it wasn't all there what may have been some of that but there wasn't there was actual not clay case. not in this case this was you know hot hot wax over a uh, over a clay armature yeah and then, so in some cases, it was a thin ivory stylus just getting, you know, very fine, expressive lines. That's great. Um, when you put, when you, let's say you, have, you were doing one of these modern websites, and there was a drop-down menu, and it asked what kind of a sculpture you are, sculptors you are. What kind of category do you put yourself in? I mean, well, I, you're locked in. It's either modern, it's something that, you know, that's yeah, predetermined. I, I, I'm a jazz expressionist sculpture. It's, okay, uh, that's a new one. That's a good one. Well, you know, I, 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 I compose with, 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 with steel. I, I work direct yeah. on the piece. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. I'm right. not going to melt it away. This is the thing. Yeah. So I'm hammering at it, I'm grinding, I'm carving. Sometimes I start with a block of wood, I carve into it. Yep. Yeah add steel and start welding to that. Um, do you know, where you, do you, do you know what, what the end product is going to be? I know where it's going, but I, I, I'm guided. I need you to explain that. I know where it's going. I think that people have a, have a conception that there is a, I'm going to sculpt, this is what my sculpture is going to look like when I'm done, and here I go, I'm going to do it and no, get it done. No, no, no. Ah. That, that wouldn't work. Why bother? Why go? I mean, it's, it's like making a bookcase. Here's the, here's the outline. Okay, bookcase. No, the reason to do the work at all is to go someplace you've never been before. Ah, okay. And that's what the material allows you to do. That's what the practice of sculpture allows you to do. It, it's a journey. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been doing it for right. 40 years. Right, right. It keeps me present. 
engaged. It's what is an adventure. It's a journey. Oh, it is. It is. Where it, can people see some of your work? Well, I have a few pieces right now at uh, Neiman Marcus. Oh, um, in the, uh, I know Neiman Marcus. In the men's department. So some stainless steel. They're not some... hanging hats on it, are they? <laughs> I don't think so. They better not. Yeah. <laughs> the... That's good. Well, then you must be with Canvas Fine Arts, the great, uh, yes. the great Suzanne Schultz. That's great. I've known her for a long time. That's yes. great. Yes. That's great because yeah, that's a great room for her. And, and, and Canvas Fine Arts has done some great things around the city. You, you should be happy that you're associated yes. Yes, with indeed. her. Right. She, they do some great. She used to be in. She used to be in that chair. As a matter of fact, she used to. She used to sit and, sit in and make me look bad. <laughs> with all her beauty. Listen, I want to thank you so much for coming in. What's the website people can go to see your work if they want to find out what's going on? PatrickPierce.com. How'd you get that? That's great. It happens to be my name. <laughs> Patrick, thank you so much. Good. Listen, thank you. Don't move. Okay, listen, gang, we're going to be back in just one quick minute. We're going to take one real fast, quick break, and uh, uh, Julia will be back, and we'll, we'll close out the show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thank you. One. Welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. And uh, my name is Glenn, and to my right and to your left, of course, is the great Julia Purchaseppi back again. <laughs> Hello, kiddo. How are you? Good. That was pretty fascinating, huh? Yeah. I mean, you don't think of, of the of sculpture being, being in different kinds of, well, I'm sure that it is. I mean, there's all different kinds of ways to do all kinds of different things. Yep. But this book is a great, great idea. A great book by a great author about a great sculptor. Yeah, he wants to go look at it. There you go. Um, <laughs> Makes me want to go to Italy. Sounds like fun. Yeah. You know, our, our big anniversary is coming up, and we're planning on doing something. I don't know what it is. I don't know that Italy will be it. I think it'll be, you know, around someplace and all that. So, so what's coming up for you? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Are you going to go to this show for the, with this band that your parents <laughs> turned you on to? <laughs> I no, that. I don't think so. It's um, I we were actually looking at tickets before uh, I did it, and I didn't realize that tickets are now really expensive. It's, they're uh, really a lot of money. big. Yeah. So they're a little out of my league now. Yeah, it costs a lot. Of you, <laughs> I like those smaller shows where paradise I can pay ten dollars to get in. <laughs> Not even the Paradise anymore. I know. It costs you arm and leg to get in there too. I know. It's crazy. It's the, the Paradise, not the Paradise Cafe in Denham, but the Paradise yeah. Lounge. Okay, Rock, yeah. Club. Rock Club, they like to call it. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. 
But you don't have any showings coming up or anything cool like that? No, I mean, I just got back to work today, and I'm working through a lot of things. So I might have something for you next week. Okay. I'm, it's all a jumble in my head right now. Because we want to make sure that people know about these open, these yeah. screenings yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. I mean, it's, you know, we're an international organization. So a lot of our screenings are not happening locally. So, um, you know. I'm willing to fly anywhere. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's go. Just <laughs> yeah. head out to the to the Midwest. Yeah. I want to remind everybody that next week's show, we're very, very excited about next week's show. Yep. We're going to have, it's the BNN, BNN TV Gallery, I guess is what they're calling it. But you too can change that by sending in your suggestions to um, Twitter at It's yeah. All About Arts. At It's All About Arts. Let us know what you think the gallery should be called. Our producer, David, mentioned the Hill Gallery. The Hill Gallery. <laughs> Who's Hill? Hillary. Oh, the Hillary. I want, we, we want Hillary back. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. The Hill Gallery. You're in trouble. I guess. All right, gang. Listen, thank you. We want to thank everybody for being here today. Next week, we're going to be stepping out of the studio and doing some amazing things with the, Uni uh, the United South End Artists. They're going to be there showing a bunch of their work out in our new gallery right behind us, right on the other side of this we're wall. We're going to do some ambush interviews. We're going to do some ambush interviews. We're going to jump out and grab them and, and see if we can't get, drag a couple of the artists, maybe the organizers in here to talk a little bit about their organization and about um, uh, their art and their artists. Maybe we'll get to meet a couple of the artists. Yeah. I hope that they're going to be around. Hey, listen, can. gang, thank you very much for being here with us tonight. It's been an awful lot of fun. Do you have any highs or buys you need to say, or you're all set? I'm good. Okay, listen, gang, like we like to say every week, get out there and do something artful for yourself, please. And uh, please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil. Please do something artful. Do it for them. And we will dig you very soon next week. Bye-bye.